Hey, it's Van from Candrone. Today we're looking at the new Anzu Raptor and comparing it to the Mavic 3 Enterprise from DJI. First of all, looking at the physical characteristics of the drone, uh, if we look at the Anzu Robotics, there is, uh, it seems like they've designed some kind of ridge on top of the, uh, the cover here, whereas the DJI, uh, there is none. Um, another thing that I did notice was that the vent port that, that uh, is on the front of the Mavic 3 Enterprise is no longer there on the, the Anzu Robotics. Um, apart from that, uh, everything else is very similar to each other. We did test some of the different accessories for the Mavic 3 Enterprise, like the speaker and the, and the RTK module. It did not work on the Anzu. However, the batteries do. So right now in its current configuration, we have the Anzu battery in the DJI drone, and we have the uh, DJI battery in the Anzu drone, and it is compatible. Characteristics of the controller, they're pretty much the exact same, just different color. So if we power on everything, uh, I'll turn on the remote controller here. Initially, the loading screen is the logo of the company, and they both boot up at the same time. Uh, the difference between the DJI and the Anzu is that with the DJI, Pilot 2 app opens up immediately, whereas the Anzu, uh, it opens up to the main screen where you have to select the air control app. Press once and, and hold. They both make the same noise. I see it has the Lancy. This is a drone system that was obviously designed for the United States that uses the, the LAANC system. There is a little start pre-flight button on the bottom here. So when we hit the start flight on both the DJI and the Anzu, uh, with DJI's pre-flight checklist, it's a little bit more technical, so it allows you to adjust your you know, return to home altitude settings, your obstacle avoidance, so it gives you a, a nice overview of how the system is. Uh, whereas the Anzu Robotic, it's a little bit more pre-flight checklist-y, right? Where it's asking you to like ensure that all the parts are in good shape, camera check, propeller check, so just, these are just like physical checks uh, that you would do on the, on the drone and the aircraft. It's literally a checklist. Then it's gonna give you a part 107 risk assessment. So again, very US based. So obviously the, the uh, Anzu Robotics is designed for the US market. So it's gonna ask you total flight time logged, when was the last time you flew, your health, uh, if you feel good, okay, your attitude, preparedness and assistance. So it's very, uh, very pilot focused. And then it's gonna allow you to go into the, the camera view here. So with the DJI, you just hit the X, and now you're into the camera view here. Looking at the interface wise, you have yeah, the overall status on the top there, pretty normal. You have the satellite, uh, RTK. Uh, we have the flight mode and see what else here. We have the battery status, remote control, RC status. The biggest thing I notice is the font is, is a little different. One thing I notice is uh, with the DJI Mavic 3 Enterprise, you have the uh, obstacle avoidance uh, cameras so you can see uh, your blind spots whereas the Anzu you don't have that feature maybe not yet maybe in a future update so we're going to the menu system slightly different with the Anzu the menu system is on the left the DJI system is on the right uh, but yeah we have the flight controller settings which is the flight settings in the DJI and it will multiple flight modes the same thing and let's see here so you have the return to home altitude so yeah the DJI seems to have a little bit more settings uh, and, and information in their menu here uh, if we go to the obstacle avoidance system here, it looks to be the same, but the DJI does have the option for you to change the horizontal upward and downward sensor distance warning and brake settings. We'll go to the remote controller settings, remote controller calibration. With the DJI, you do have the control stick mode and with the Anzu, you don't have that option. So it's important if let's say you use this in Asia where the stick configuration might be different, but again, US market based, so not too important. Now we go to the HD transmission settings. So you have 2.45 dual band, same thing. And with the DJI, you have some more settings. It looks like you can configure the video output type, oh, that's on there too. The video display mode, you can change output display. So a little bit more settings in the DJI here. Next, we'll go to the battery, same thing. And it looks like the DJI has a time to self discharge mode. So you can change that setting, but the Anzu does not. 
This is where if you have the speaker attachment on the Anzu drone, it, in order to use the speaker, you have to go into the menu setting, uh, whereas the DJI drone PDSK button will display on the right when you have that plugged into the drone here. With the DJI drone, you have the gimbal tilt smooth start stop and the max gimbal tilt speed uh, right in the top menu here, but the Anzu does not have that setting. And the other difference is the RTK. So if you hit the RTK here, with the DJI, you, I believe you have to have the RTK module pl uh, plugged in for that menu to come up. Yeah. And then another thing is the Anzu does not appear to have the pinpoint function. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any smart modes like the, uh, the orbit uh, ability. And it obviously doesn't have flight hub integration. So you don't have that connectivity there. For the map view, so with the DJI system, it uses the FlySafe database and it does kind of show us all of the different aerodromes around us. Whereas the Anzu Robotics, it's using the Land Sea system. The system was obviously designed again for the United States. So all the aerodromes and airports are shown on the map. But if we go to Canada, there's nothing there. So the one good thing about the Anzu Robotics is that it's, it doesn't have any geo-locking. So you can technically fly this right, wherever you want without any uh, restrictions. So overall the Anzu Robotics is very similar to the DJI drone. Uh, looking at the menu system it's slightly different. There's some stripped out features uh, with the Anzu. However it has all the basic functionalities that you need to be able to, to operate the drone. So with that out of the way we should be looking at the mapping functionality of this drone because that's what the Mavic 3 Enterprise was really designed for. Planning the flight route within DJI is very simple. It's very intuitive. Uh, with the Anzu Robotics you have to Tap the icon menu up top here, automate, automated flight plans, and you're gonna hit the plus icon up top here and create a flight plan. So uh, as you can see with the Anzu Robotics, you only have two options, which are the mapping route and the waypoint routes. Uh, with the DJI, you have a couple more options in terms of more advanced functionalities like slope route mapping or geometric route or even linear uh, route mapping. To kind of compare uh, apples to apples, we'll look at the area route. So we'll create an area route in the DJI here, and we'll create a map route in the Anzu. With the Anzu, we have to draw the mapping area like how we do in the DJI. So I'll just do a test area here. Okay, and I'll do the same with the DJI. Um, so with the Anzu, um, you have the map on the left side here. We're gonna make sure they select the Raptor. Camera is the Raptor, hit OK. And with the DJI, once you've drawn that, I can hit the check mark, select the right aircraft, and we'll do a ortho collection, just like that. Okay, so yeah, in terms of the mapping capabilities, looking at the interface here, you have ortho, oblique, same thing, ortho, GSD, relative altitude, route altitude, looks like the same thing so far. The only thing I see missing with the Anzu right now is the cloud reconstruction. So obviously it doesn't have Flight Hub 2 to do that. The mapping interface is similar, but the DJI interface is definitely nicer looking because you can actually see <laughs> the emissions that you, you created. It gives you a nice image on the left side there. And with the Raptor, it's just text-based, so not as intuitive. But if it gets the job done, it gets the job done, right? You go into the camera view and then select the mission from there to start. So let's see. Okay, so I'm back in the camera view here. Uh, okay, so I select a mission within the camera view and I'll hit the play button here and I will hit play and let's take it off. Okay, so it's gonna go to 100 feet. We actually went to its safe altitude and then to 100 feet. Or no, that's 30 meters. Zooming along there really quick to its first waypoint. Okay, it's at its starting point. Camera's pointed down. And mapping has commenced. It's using the yeah, same kind of interface that tells you the altitude, the heading, the home point as the DJI drone, which is nice because we're all used to that. It's going, it's gonna take about a couple minutes here to complete. So the drone has returned to home. And just as I expected, the functionality wise and like the mapping capabilities and the flight characteristic, exactly the same as the Mavic 3 Enterprise. So nothing surprising there. If I couldn't use the Mavic 3 Enterprise for my mapping mission, I would say the best and only comparable option in the market would be the Anzu Raptor.